So the first item on our bicycle touring gear list are our bikes. Michelle and I both ride priority bikes, Michelle on the Priority 600 and myself on the Priority 600X. The highlight of both of these models is the pinion gearbox and Gates belt drive system. The pinion system provides over 600% gear range which gives us more than enough top gear for the speeds we travel and incredible hill climbing capabilities on the low end. The Gates carbon belt drive also allows Michelle and I to spend a lot less time doing drivetrain maintenance. The biggest differences between the two models are the additional gear mounting points and the inverted fork suspension on the 600X, while the 600 comes standard with fenders and an integrated lighting system powered by a dynamo. Michelle and I have both used the Malaco handlebars by Surly. These handlebars give us numerous hand positions for both comfort and handling, along with more locations to mount electronics. We also both use stem bags for our water bottles and items we like to keep handy. These stem bags are required for me since I run with a full frame bag, which gives me 10 liters of space for my heaviest gear, like food, batteries, and electronics. We are both running Schwabley Marathon Plus tires, which we've been using for the last six years, and over those last six years, we've had one flat, and that was with a huge piece of glass. Although they do have a stiffer ride than some other options, we prefer the peace of mind that the Marathon gives us. Lastly, we also both ride with Brook C17 seat. Although many swear by the comfort of the B-Series, we again opt for simplicity and ease of maintenance. Next, we move on to our shelter. Over the years, Michelle and I have gone through a few tents, but our most recent tent is by far our favorite, the Big Agnes Copper Spur UL3. This is the three-person model, but since we both use 25-inch sleeping pads, which we'll get to shortly, the UL3 gives us that space for both pads and a small amount of gear in the tent with us. Yet the dual vestibules give us all the space we need to keep all of our gear out of the weather, all at the cost of 3 pounds, 10 ounces, or 6 ounces heavier than the UL2. The Copper Spur UL3 poles are a bit on the long side, and so they are always carried on the outside, but there is a bikepacking version of this tent with shorter pole segments. Inside the tent, there are pockets galore, and one very large net pocket above our feet. Next on the list are our sleep systems. Michelle recently acquired a Big Agnes Boundary Deluxe, and after testing a lot of different pads, she knew this was the one when a pad test turned into a nap. This pad is fairly heavy and bulky, but at our age, the one thing we don't skimp on is sleep comfort. I've been using the Nemo Tensor, which I firmly believe is the best pad for the money and comfort. Although both pads come with an inflation sack, it is only the Nemo Tensor inflation sack that actually works and allows me to fill my 25 inch pad with five long breaths. For insulation, Michelle and I use the Burrow 40 degree quilt made by Hammock Gear. These quilts are well made and have performed extremely well while weighing in at only 13 ounces. And because of the 900 filled down, packed down easily into a 4 liter dry bag. We have both been using a Sea to Summit Eros inflatable pillow, but I recently had to replace mine after 3 years and I mistakenly purchased the premium version over the ultralight, and I figured this was the last pillow I would ever buy. But then Michelle bought the ultralight large version which became the next last pillow I'm ever going to buy. Again, a little additional bulk for a lot of extra comfort. Next on our list is our cook kit. Michelle and I are food opportunists when we are out riding, so most of our cooking is boiling water for coffee, tea, and cocoa. When we do cook on the trail, we found that a 1 liter pot with a heat exchanger on the bottom and a well-fitting lid is all we need to cook up a good hot meal. Inside this 1 liter pot we keep our transient alcohol stove, our multi-fuel pot stand, a sponge, and a lighter with room to spare. We have been using alcohol for cooking fuel for years and it's probably the easiest fuel to find. Almost every gas station and convenience store stocks fuel line antifreeze. My pot stand also serves two purposes. It holds my alcohol stove, and I can burn small caliber wood if I run out of fuel. Never had to do this yet, but it sure sounds like I'm thinking ahead. As for clothing, Michelle and I both pack pretty efficiently, carrying only what we need. In my case, that is two long sleeve Columbia fly fishing shirts, two pair of 11 pine uprising convertible shorts, two chamois shorts, two pair of darn tough wool socks, one short sleeve casual shirt, a pair of non chamois underwear, and a Warbonnet Outdoors stash jacket. Since I'm wearing almost half of these clothes at any given time, the remaining fits into a 10 liter dry bag, and along with my toiletries, rounds out one of my rear panniers. Michelle and I have both stuck with these fly fishing shirts because they do a great job keeping us both protected from the sun, and with the shoulder vent keeps us cool in even the worst conditions. Our Warbonnet stash jackets both pack down really small, and with their pit zippers keep us both dry and well ventilated in the rain. Next, let's talk about repair kits, both for your bike and for your body. 
My first aid kit is fairly light, but I think it packs in enough to address the vast majority of first aid issues. I have the full list of contents in the video description, but the short version is this. Gauze, stretch bandage, feminine hygiene pad, scissors, hemostat, wound cleaning pads, lots of different band-aid types, painkillers, wound seal powder, Benadryl, personal meds, water purification tablets, and a mini Altoid tin for a sewing kit. As for my bike repair kit, the full list is in the video description, but the short list is this. Spare drive belt, spare tube, spare rubber strap, tube patches, 10 spare spokes, a Lazine air pump, full-size Leatherman, mini Leatherman, stainless steel wire, Schrader valve adapter, lighter, tire tool, bike multi-tool, four sizes of Allen wrenches, Gorilla tape, zip ties, a coiled bike lock, a notebook with a pen, and a couple dollars of quarters. Again, we are going for enough tools to handle the vast majority of maintenance issues while keeping it light. Now we can talk about camera gear. I use three separate cameras for different purposes. My primary camera is my DJI Pocket 2. The best part of this camera is the gimbal that keeps my footage stable and cinematic. This camera is not waterproof, and the gimbal is somewhat fragile, which brings us to my action camera, the Insta360 X3. This camera is a game changer for action shots, as I no longer need to worry about shot framing since the camera angle is determined using the Insta360 editing software after taking the video. This ease of use comes at the cost of a pretty extensive fisheye effect. But nothing beats the amazing cinematic and unforgettable shots that my DJI Mavic Mini 2 drone delivers. This drone comes in at under 9 ounces and folds down smaller than the drone controller itself. I use a special drone controller app on my phone called Litchi, which allows me to program the drone to follow me from any angle and altitude without me having to touch the controls, allowing us to get those unique perspective shots. All in, my camera gear weighs in at 2 pounds and 4 ounces. Rounding out the camera gear goes those last few tools and electronics to finish out the kit. I carry three 10,000 milliamp power banks, a four port USB plug adapter, multiple USB cable types, a headlamp, a backup flashlight, my Element Wahoo GPS, rechargeable head and tail lights, an inflatable sit pad, and a packable backpack. I have come to prefer multiple small power banks over one large one in the case of any individual failures. Our four port plug adapter and the USB power banks are quick charge capable, so even a short daytime stop with power can top off battery within the hour. I also carry a self retracting USB cable that has three different USB ends to it, and USB pigtail cables that have two plugs on each cable, allowing us to charge a lot of devices all at once. Some folks like to carry those full size collapsible chairs, but I've been toying with this smaller and lighter inflatable pad, so we will see how that fares. And lastly, to carry all this stuff are our bike bag configurations. Michelle and I take different approaches to bike bags, showing each person's preferences and the fact that there is no one way to do it. Michelle uses a very traditional bike touring configuration, placing the majority of weight on her back wheel using two 20 liter Ortlieb panniers and a 12 liter Ortlieb trunk bag. Michelle also has a porter rack on the front of the bike and uses that occasionally for bulky lightweight items. This configuration is less than optimal for bike performance as the back end is prone to swaying, but loading, unloading, and packing the gear is super easy. I prefer a more balanced approach to my bike bags, adding more individual bags to the total configuration, with some bags that stay on the bike. I use two 12-liter panniers on my rear rack, along with a 10-liter frame bag made by Rogue Panda, two 6-liter fork bags, and a 3-liter relevant egress pocket bag on the handlebars. Michelle and I both use the Rockgeist Dr. Jones bag for the inside of our Malaco bars, giving us an easily accessible bag up top that can expand out to 9 liters. And there it is, all the stuff that a couple of midlifers carry to enjoy bike touring. Hope you liked the video, and feel free to let me know where we got it wrong. Peace.